Item number, SCP-003. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. SCP-003 is to be maintained at a constant temperature of no less than 35 degrees Celsius and ideally kept above 100 degrees Celsius. No living multicellular organisms of category 4 or higher complexity may be allowed to come into contact with SCP-003. In event of total power failure, if SCP-003-1 begins to increase its mass, assigned personnel must engage in skin contact with SCP-003-1. Ideally, personnel may use their body heat to return SCP-003-1 to above the critical temperature. However, skin contact must be maintained even in event of SCP-003 reaching activation temperature, lasting at minimum until SCP-003-1 advances fully to its second growth stage. Personnel who enter SCP-003's containment area must first be examined for body parasites of Category 4 or higher complexity and sterilized if such organisms are present. All personnel who have come in physical contact with SCP-003-1 are to immediately report for sterilization afterwards. SCP-003-1 must not be removed from SCP-003-2, except in case of emergency procedures detailed above. Any significant change in SCP-003-2's rune activity, including pattern, frequency, or color, should be reported within three hours of occurrence. Cessation of rune activity must be reported immediately. SCP-003-2 must be supplied with power via the source designated generator 003-9 at all times. Description: SCP-003 consists of two related components of separate origin, referred to as SCP-003-1 and SCP-003-2. SCP-003-1 appears to be composed of chitin hair, and nails of unknown biology, arranged in a configuration similar to that of a computer motherboard. Testing reveals SCP-003-1 to predate earliest known circuit boards by a factor of thousands of years. SCP-003-1 is considered sentient, but not actively dangerous except under certain conditions. SCP-003-1 was found on a stone tablet. SCP-003-2 on which it currently resides. The runes on SCP-003-2 are not part of any known language and emit pale, flickering light patterns. SCP-003-2 is controlled by a non-biological internal computer, the contents of which are mostly inaccessible without risk of damaging SCP-003-2. SCP-003-2 is capable of controlled emissions of radiation, including heat, light, and anomalous radiation types. SCP-003-2 contains an internal power source of an anomalous nature, which appears to have been losing power since several centuries before discovery. It is considered probable that SCP-003-2 was created for the purpose of containing SCP-003-1. Partially interpreted data recovered from SCP-003-2 may refer to a past and or potential future LK-class restructuring event caused by SCP-003-1. SCP-003 was located by remote viewing team SRV-04 Beta. It appears possible that SRV-04 Beta was deliberately contacted by SCP-003-2. Other organizations have also been alerted to SCP-003's existence, possibly by similar means. Despite this activity, SCP-003-2 does not appear to be sentient based on its lack of reaction to M-03 Gloria analysis and procedures. When SCP-003 drops below the temperature of 35 degrees Celsius, both components react. First, SCP-003-1 enters a growth state characterized by an exponential increase in mass. This growth state consists of two stages. In both stages, SCP-003-1 partially fuels its growth by converting matter around it, starting with any surrounding inorganic material, including atmospheric elements, then non-living organic material, including cells of dead skin, hair, chitin, enamel, keratin, and other biological materials. The first stage is always the same. 
SCP-003-1 will first increase its mass, then take a form similar in shape to an ophioroid, brittle star of 15 meters in diameter, including what appears to be a central processor of 3 meters in diameter. It will form sensory organs that appear to scan its surrounding environment, and will partially convert the area around it to an unidentified anomalous substance. SCP-003-2 seems immune from conversion. The second stage describes a growth alteration which occurs when SCP-003 comes into contact with living organic material. SCP-003 appears to template itself off of the organic material and will attempt communication with organisms that match its initial template or templates. In its second stage, SCP-003-1 may pause, slow, or change its growth then will also convert inorganic and non-living organic elements into functionally similar structures, while anomalously altering their physical makeup. While growth is consistent in the first stage, in the second stage SCP-003-1's growth rate is diminished by 20 to 90 percent, so long as SCP-003-1 remains in contact with living organic material. The percentage is determined by the complexity of the organisms in contact with SCP-003-1. SCP-003-1 appears to devote a large amount of processing power to analysis of living organic material. During each of SCP-003-1's growth stages, SCP-003-2 releases bursts of radiation that temporarily inhibit SCP-003-1's growth, or reverse this growth when the temperature of SCP-003-1 rises above 100 degrees Celsius. Similar radiation emissions have been replicated or recorded via other anomalous means. SCP-003-1's biology has been the subject of extensive study. Significant elements have been identified similar to SCP-1512 SCP and SCP-2756, the latter two of which have no further confirmed connection with SCP-003-1 and no known connection with each other, and none of which are fully understood. Technically, even less understood than SCP-003, thanks to the extensive cross-disciplinary research on the SCP-003 objects. To date, no convincing analysis has been put forward which satisfactorily explains SCP-003-1's connection to these SCP objects or others, nor its connection to modern technology beyond appearance and potential mimicry via unknown mechanism. Addendum 003-01 Acting on information gathered from linguistic analysis of SCP-003-2's runes and comparative data analysis, research team M03 Gloria has managed to establish a link between SCP-003 and data expunged for analysis of functions. SCP-003-1 must now be considered sentient and is to be kept a minimum of one kilometer from data expunged and the resulting byproduct at all times. Addendum 003-02 SCP-003-2's power loss has been exacerbated by the procedures performed by M03 Gloria. On orders of 0510, M03 Gloria will continue procedures. Addendum 003-03 During M03 Gloria procedures, SCP-003-1 doubled its mass and began rapid structural growth. Temperature was immediately returned to 100 degrees Celsius. Growth and mass increase of SCP-003-1 continued for 9 minutes and 6 seconds, at which time a sustained radiation spike was produced by SCP-003-2. In response, SCP-003-1 returned to its normal state in 3 minutes and 39 seconds. New growth dissolved into a dusty residue which was collected for analysis. Both SCP-003-1 and SCP-003-2 ceased all detectable activity. SCP-003-2 did not resume activity until connected to an external power source. SCP-003-2's runes glowed uniformly gray and did not resume normal activity for three hours. SCP-003-2 no longer appears to be able to maintain containment area at a temperature above 35 degrees Celsius without external power supplied by generator 003-3 through 9. Addendum 003-04 
The procedure detailed in Addendum 003-03 was repeated, and SCP-003-1 again entered a growth state. After 10 minutes and 13 seconds, SCP-003-2 once again produced a sustained radiation spike. SCP-003-1's growth stopped for 36 seconds, then resumed at its previous pace. On quadrupling its mass, SCP-003-1 formed a coherent outer shell and body. After appearing to scan its environment and partially converting its environment, SCP-003-1 then breached containment, entering the observation gallery where nine members of M-03 Gloria were present. On physical contact with team members, SCP-003-1 encompassed them in rapidly grown appendages and stopped growth for 15 minutes. SCP-003-1 then resumed growth and rearranged the component parts of the center of its form to the shape of a three-meter-tall female humanoid with peripheral tentacles shifting to extrude primarily from SCP-003-1's newly formed hair and spine. SCP-003-1 then produced rudimentary vocalizations in an apparent initial attempt to communicate with researchers. Data expunged. An unknown individual approached the compromised containment area in company of a full squad of agents. The individual claimed to be acting on orders of 0510 and attempted communication with SCP-003-1. Data expunged. Following this incident, Agent Jackson of M-03 Gloria successfully restored power to SCP-003-2 and activated backup generators to return the temperature to 100 degrees Celsius. SCP-003-1 returned to its normal state in 21 minutes and 7 seconds and was successfully recontained without incident. All nine members of M-03 Gloria affected by SCP-003-1 were afterwards found to be physically unharmed, with no residual effects besides psychological trauma. The converted materials of SCP-003's former containment area did not dissolve and are now under analysis. Addendum 003-05 In light of the previous incident, 0510 was removed from the 05 Council by joint decision of 05 05 and 05 M03 Gloria procedures have been indefinitely suspended. Special Access Program M03 Gloria required Transcript of Incident Report A21B Cycle 8 for dissemination to O5 command and staff. Interviewers. And present. O5-2, O5-5, O5-7, O5-10, and staff. Interviewed. Dr. Tilda David Moose, M03 Gloria Lead. Excerpt 35A. She tried to talk to us. We all heard her voice in our heads in a sort of half language we couldn't fully understand. Some of the others passed out immediately. I lasted a little longer, but it wasn't because of mental fortitude. It's just that she was trying to tell us different things. She showed Jones a replay of all the memories of everything Jones ever felt anything about, all over the course of a few minutes. She ripped three of the researchers apart and put them back together unharmed. She doesn't understand human emotion or pain or very much about how we experience the world. Yes, I would say the containment procedures are necessary. Listen, she wants to remake the world into a paradise. A paradise filtered through her own alien understanding of paradise, but still, a paradise designed for us, for humanity. She would be happy to make a paradise for any sufficiently complex organism she comes across first. Anything with a complex enough mind to accept her say, a dog, or a housefly. If she breaches again, we have to be there first. What would it be like? I don't know. She showed us images. Not quite images. I can see them in my head, but they're not pictures. The closest thing I can think of is what you see when you close your eyes suddenly and tightly, but brighter and more complex. The images had metallic sounds associated with them, and sensory details that we don't have the words or concepts to describe. The whole effect felt like words of some kind. I believe she wanted to see what we could understand, so she could understand us. She didn't have time to finish analyzing us. 
I don't know what would have happened if she had. Item number, SCP-059. Object class, Keter. Special containment procedures. A single specimen of SCP-059 is kept at Site 11B inside a graded Z laminate shielding box composed of depleted uranium, tantalum, tin, steel, copper, and aluminum. Surrounding SCP-059's containment box is a 7 meter by 7 meter by 7 meter area, sealed as a level 4 biohazard area, and surrounded by 3 centimeters of lead shielding. This area is to be sprayed daily with a solution of methyl isothiocyanate to prevent overgrowth of SCP-059-1. Personnel entering an SCP-059 affected area are cautioned to wear appropriate biohazard protection, as well as type K-59-B radiation shielding. They are to remain in the area for no more than 15 minutes, as the radiation shielding is only partially effective. SCP-059-1 infestations found in the wild should be contained by removing the SCP-059 specimen responsible and incineration of all observed SCP-059-1. Large underground infestations are best neutralized by fuel-air thermobaric explosives. Additional specimens of SCP-059 are not needed for experimentation and should be transported to Site 11B for incineration by plasma arc at 10,000 Kelvin. Description: SCP-059 is a radioactive mineral of unknown origin, superficially resembling shelite. A component of SCP-059 is believed to originate in an alternate universe and to be responsible for its anomalous properties, in addition to alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. SCP-059 specimens produce a previously unknown type of radiation, apparently unique to the object, tentatively designated Delta Radiation. Delta Radiation is accompanied by Cherenkov Radiation, visible as a blue glow. Delta Radiation is only partially contained by standard radiation shielding. The best results have been obtained using Grade Z laminate shielding with an additional super-dense metal layer. This reduces the effective range of Delta Radiation from approximately 20 meters to approximately 6 meters. When an area is exposed to delta radiation for more than 15 minutes, an unknown species of fungus, designated SCP-059-1, begins to grow on any exposed surface. This fungus does not require any standard nutrition, but will die within 24 hours of removal from a delta radiation source. SCP-059-1 is itself radioactive, but does not emit delta radiation. However, if a critical mass of SCP-051-1 is allowed to grow, delta radiation from an unknown source other than SCP-059 will appear in the area, further supporting SCP-059-1's growth. Interested readers may consult Dr. for his theories of space-time stress and merger of alternate realities. Within 18 hours, the infected mass will become transparent and disappear, presumably into the universe that is a source of delta radiation. The process then continues, with SCP-059-1 infecting new material. SCP-059-1 will infest both living beings and inanimate objects. Humans and animals infected with SCP-059-1 become immune to the effects of ionizing radiation, but progressively merge with SCP-059-1 and eventually have all tissues replaced by fungal growth. While generally non-violent, they will attempt to expose unaffected individuals to SCP-059. SCP-059-1 infections do not appear to be directly contagious, but only spread by contact with Delta radiation. However, long-term exposure to SCP-059-1 has not been adequately tested to rule out considering it a biohazard, as well as a known radiation hazard. Infected individuals still capable of communication describe seeing a world entirely covered with SCP-059-1, where much of the surface is composed of SCP-059. It is unclear whether this is a hallucination or a view into the source of SCP-059. Infectees are generally pleased with their condition and often refer to being in the blue light of heaven. SCP-059-1 is affected by most fungicides but new growth will continue as long as SCP-059 is present. Early stage SCP-059-1 infection in humans may be treated with griseofulvin. However, the treatment is 90% likely to lead to death by radiation poisoning. Treated individuals lose their immunity to radiation 
and will already have absorbed a now lethal dose prior to treatment. Late stage treatment should not be attempted, as too much tissue will already be converted to SCP-059-1. The remains of failed treatments should be kept out of range of SCP-059. Otherwise, data expunged. SCP-059 specimens have been discovered in eight different underground locations, across a range of 5,000 kilometers. No pattern has emerged for their appearance. Specimens range from 1 to 10 kilograms in size, and are not part of the normal rock formations in the areas where they have been found. Addendum Dr. has recorded and analyzed the patterns of radiation emitted by the contained SCP-059-1 colony, and believes SCP-059-1 may be sapient in attempting to communicate via controlled emissions of radiation. Initial attempts to analyze this language reveal data expunged. Item Number SCP-063 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-063 is to be kept at all times within Dr. personal bathroom, located within the personnel quarters upon Site-19. Object is to be used as designed at least once in a 24-hour period, or the object will begin to emit an unknown specialized radiation that results in objects and material within a 0.6 meter or 2 foot radius being slowly warped and eventually disintegrating into a fine dust. Radiation's effect on living test subjects has not been monitored. Description SCP-063 appears to be an average pale blue toothbrush. Stenciled along the side of the object are the words, The World's Best Toothbrush Sick. The word toothbrush is spelled incorrectly, though whether this was accidental or a purposeful action by the creators of the object is unknown. SCP-063 displays the ability to effortlessly cleave through any and all dead or inorganic matter, the focal point of this ability being the bristles. However, Matter touched by the bristles is not separated, such as by way of a knife, but completely expunged from existence, leaving no trace whatsoever. This mode of operation is reminiscent of SCP-2207, suggesting the two anomalies share a connection, or were created by the same entity or entities. Additionally, subjects who have used SCP-063 have claimed that the experience left their teeth feeling remarkably clean, in spite of its extraordinary abilities. Lab analysis has discerned that SCP-063 is completely made of common plastic. Addendum SCP-063 was originally found in St. Petersburg, on the person of a thief working in the area using SCP-063's abilities to crack safes. When questioned about the object, subject professed ignorance, claiming that he simply found the object one day. Questioning of the subject continued, until he took his own life. His reason for doing this is, as of yet, unknown. Item Number SCP-074 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-074 is contained at Site-81. SCP-074 is an active infohazard. No research in evaluating its anomalous properties is to be conducted. All personnel who have previously engaged in research into SCP-074's anomalous properties must never come within 5 kilometers of SCP-074. SCP-074 is contained within a 6 meter by 6 meter by 3 meter reinforced glass chamber, filtered to block all ultraviolet light, and situated within a windowless room lit by monochromatic safe lights, which serve as secondary containment. A smaller containment chamber would significantly increase the probability of SCP-074 spontaneously breaching primary containment. The containment chamber is to be surrounded with scaffolds bearing sheets of live cultured human skin, held parallel to the surfaces of the containment chamber, and arranged overlapping each other such that lateral coverage is at least 95%. Skin sheets must be a minimum of 3 mm thick and warm to 37 degrees Celsius and must be grown from samples provided by D-Class personnel with no less than a middle school education and no more than a high school education. All skin sheets are to be examined on a daily basis for instances of SCP-074-1. All instances of SCP-074-1 are to be excised and incinerated. SCP-074 is to be fed 75 grams of fresh shredded apple leaves, genus Malus, bark, and fruit hydroponically grown to ensure lack of pollutants and foreign organisms, once a day, via a mechanical dispenser. 
In the event of a spontaneous containment breach, personnel can coerce SCP-074 into returning to its containment by first occupying each of its four sets of jaws with an entire raw apple, then physically pushing SCP-074 in the desired direction, gently tapping its compound eyes with an open palm, or spraying its front pair of antenna with a 0.5% solution of methanoic acid. Description SCP-074 is an anomalous organism, which uses various quantum properties at a macroscopic scale, and in other ways modifies the standard laws of physics within its immediate vicinity. The specific nature of these modifications appears to be linked to the extent to which humans in SCP-074's vicinity are aware of the precise details of the physical laws which SCP-074 modifies, such that research to determine whether SCP-074 has a given property or capability results in SCP-074 developing or manifesting that property or capability. Archive 074-317-E, a full list of the anomalous physical phenomena known to be or to have been associated with SCP-074, is available to personnel level 3 or higher. Personnel who access this document will be disqualified from working with SCP-074, or for any other reason coming within 5 kilometers of Site-81. SCP-074 has repeatedly manifested the ability to spontaneously materialize at locations as much as 3 meters outside its primary containment. This is believed to be, or to be analogous to, quantum tunneling. Foundation entomologists have tentatively identified SCP-074 as belonging to the order Isopoda, commonly known as a woodlouse. Its inertial mass is approximately 1700 kilograms but its gravitational mass is approximately 375 grams. Its volume has been estimated at 1.7 cubic meters, approximately the size of a compact car. SCP-074 is female, although it lacks the typical isopod marsupium, or brood pouch in which eggs are incubated, and parthenogenetic. Periodically, approximately 1.3 times per hour when SCP-074 is shielded from ultraviolet light, and approximately 29.2 times per hour when SCP-074 is exposed to unfiltered daylight. The globular organ at the tip of its ovipositor luminesces, and emits what was originally thought to be a form of non-ionizing radiation, but which has since been identified as coherent wave packets of the probability of one of SCP-074's self-fertilized eggs, henceforth SCP-074-1, reifying, i.e. becoming a thing spontaneously coming into existence. Personnel who properly understand the concept of wave packets are disqualified from working with SCP-074. Instances of SCP-074-1 preferentially reify and incubate within the flesh of humans with knowledge of physics. The rudimentary knowledge of physics which even poorly educated adult citizens of a technological civilization can acquire via cultural osmosis. For example, magnets can attract or repel each other, matter is made of atoms, light has a speed, appears to be sufficient. In the absence of suitable humans to serve as hosts, the wave packets will reify within other organisms, or within inanimate objects. However, rather than incubating, the eggs will wither and die, leaving perforations similar to radiation damage at a macroscopic scale. The wave packets appear to decay over time, as no wave packets or instances of wave packet related damage have been detected at distances greater than approximately 400 meters from SCP-074. The rate at which successfully incubated instances of SCP-074-1 mature appears to be dependent on the host's exposure to ultraviolet light. Within a host exposed to an average of 30 minutes of unfiltered sunlight per day for a month, an instance of SCP-074-1 was observed to grow from 2 milligrams to 8 kilograms, at which point it was surgically excised and killed. Whereas, within a host totally isolated from natural light for a month, the three simultaneous instances reached sizes at excision of only 600 grams, 680 grams, and 710 grams. The complete developmental history and life cycle of SCP-074-1, including how they emerge from their host, and their size at emergence, is not yet known. Item Number SCP-084 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-084 is currently under a full non-interaction order until the full extent of the emission waves has been evaluated. 
A continuous surveillance watch is to be maintained around the active area of SCP-084, with the primary objective of civilian misdirection and external surveillance. With no major roads, trails, or other travel routes nearby, any civilians encountered approaching SCP-084 are to be deemed suspect and detained for evaluation. Under no circumstances are any Foundation or civilian personnel allowed into the active area of SCP-084, except with express vocal and written permission of no fewer than two members of O5 Command. Sentries are to maintain their posted position with line-of-sight contact checks on fellow sentries, in conjunction with compass and landmark checking. All reference points should be well outside the active area of SCP-084. Should any sentry fail to report in via vocal roll call, full recall orders will be issued to all sentries, and containment will be re-evaluated by special response teams. In the event of active area fluctuation, full recall orders are to be assumed by all active sentries, followed by appropriate action. No form of radio, GPS, television, cell phone, video camera, still picture camera, or any other recording or electronic media devices are permitted within 100 meters of the active area around SCP-084. Civilians found with such devices within this area are to have said devices confiscated and destroyed immediately. Any recordings collected, data expunged. Description: SCP-084 appears to be a large radio tower, positioned in the center of a large open field, with two small outbuildings. Direct observation and sample collection from SCP-084 is impossible, due to the effect that is emitted around and from SCP-084. SCP-084 appears to emit a form of wave, or radiation, that has a detrimental effect on local space-time reality. The most pronounced aspect of this is the alteration of local space within the active area of SCP-084. Externally, the active area forms a rough dome shape, of 200 meters in diameter. SCP-084 appears inside this area at random points, appearing to jump at random times, sometimes even appearing in multiple locations at once inside the active area. Internally, the space appears to be unlimited, with SCP-084 at the center. SCP-084 is impossible to reach due to the emitted effect. Attempts to approach SCP-084 within the active area have returned the observation that SCP-084 retains its relative position on the horizon, even after three months and twelve days of dedicated direct travel, both by vehicle and on foot. Termination tests have proven impossible, as no means of destruction are capable of physically reaching SCP-084, even when entered from outside the active area. Local space will also distort periodically. This will cause relative distances to randomly extend, or contract, in a flicker, causing buildings or objects to suddenly jump thousands of meters away, or rush up to other points, sometimes even causing overlaps. These overlaps have a markedly detrimental effect on living tissue. The town of is assumed to have been situated in or around the original manifestation of the active area. This town is no longer observable from outside the active area appearing only once inside the active area. The town has maintained the same population, 343 humans, for the duration of its encapsulation. Births appear to be impossible, along with normal aging patterns. Suicide and or homicide appear to be circumvented by the area of effect, with dead subjects flickering and appearing alive and unharmed several seconds after death. There are also reports of events rewinding, causing things like mortal wounds to visibly freeze and close. Subjects appear to exhibit many events of inconsistent space-time, as do most structures. Electronic devices and recording equipment do not function correctly in or around the active area. Subjects report bizarre or unsettling transmissions from video and audio recordings and playback devices. This acts to totally isolate from the outside world precluding any need for Foundation-enacted containment. It also appears impossible to leave the active area after a random period of time. One subject, found on the grass plain, reported he had been traveling for six years. He was found approximately 400 meters from city limits. Log 084-A4 Record of observed anomalous events relating to SCP-084 Detailed observation made of the grass plain making up the majority of the active area. 
The plane appears to be made of one 10 meter by 10 meter section of grass, repeated endlessly to make up the plane. Sections appear to be randomly rotated as they are formed, causing sections of grass and small ground variations to line up incorrectly. Few non-human organisms appear to exist within the active area. Those outside the active area avoid it and appear to vanish shortly after entering. Animals observed inside the active area appear normal, but behave strangely. Shuddering movements, sudden shivering, repetitive loops, and other abnormal actions appear to indicate these may not be actual animals. Most animals appear to flicker and vanish after three to four hours. Vocal communication is difficult within the active area. Vocal communication appears normal within five meters of the speaking subject, with reports of a slightly muffled quality reported commonly. Outside of five meters, subjects appear to be speaking from a great distance, with a great deal of echoing. Reports of speech being heard several seconds after the subject has stopped talking, and speech occurring with no subject speaking, are also not uncommon. Detailed observation of the radio tower is impossible, due to the inability to physically reach it, and the effect of the broadcast on most observational equipment. Basic telescope or binoculars systems show the tower to be hazy and static-fogged, while more advanced equipment is subject to the anomalous broadcast effect. Weather patterns, as well as basic day-night cycles, appear to be totally random. Overhead sky will randomly cycle between day, night, clear, and other weather patterns. Relative sun and cloud position appear random as well, with frequent flickering and blurring between different states. Physical alteration or damage to anything within the active area is impossible. Actions such as digging, demolition, and new constructions will suddenly blur and be reset to their previous unaltered state at random points. Subjects inside a reset structure, such as inside a hole, will become instantly trapped and fused. Humans in the active area around SCP-084 exhibit some of the more striking and easily observed reality distortion effects. These include sudden blurring of limbs or head, appearing to suddenly gyrate at violently high speed for several seconds before ending. Subjects experience no pain and are often unaware of this phenomenon. Looping, typically manifested as the repeating of 8 to 20 seconds of time. Subjects will go through an action, example, exiting a doorway, picking up an article of clothing, then suddenly freeze and flicker then return to the original starting position of the loop and repeat the action, even if this involves a sudden teleportation of significant distance. Rarely, subjects appear to become caught in a permanent loop. Observation and interrogation of subjects show that basic human needs, such as food, water, and sleep, are no longer required after prolonged exposure to the active area. Some subjects report not having eaten or drank for, they believe, five years. One elderly subject also reports having made 2,110 unsuccessful suicide attempts. Subject will sometimes be able to pass through solid matter without incident. These periods appear to last for random periods of time, and begin and end without warning. Subjects inside solid matter when the period ends will become trapped or fused until the period resumes. One subject reports being trapped below the waist in a wall for two years. Extreme psychological distress is observed after long-term exposure. The transmission's data expunged barrier, which is compromised over long-term exposure. Subjects in advanced reception states typically reset after several months. Recorded transmissions show a slight data expunged cycles overall. Attempting to catalog and record these broadcasts has therefore been remanded to autonomous systems to preclude any additional loss of Foundation personnel. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.